Have you ever wondered what makes Barcelona one of the most visited cities in the world? Is it the iconic landmarks, the stunning architecture, or perhaps something deeper? All right guys, summer has started and I am headed to Barcelona. Have you ever felt like a city could breathe its history into you? In Barcelona, history isn't just in the museums, it's in the air, in the walls of the building. It's a city you don't just visit, you experience it. All right, immigration is done. Welcome to Barcelona. In this video, I'll take you to the core historic places and reveal some of the mysteries and secrets behind the top eight historic places in Barcelona. Today is the day, my second day. I arrived yesterday and today I'm going for a city tour, Sagrada Familia and then a lot of other really amazing places. Hello. Hi, I'm Arvin. Nice to meet you. Let's go. Let's go. We started our journey at Placa de Catalunya. This is the beating heart of Barcelona where everything seems to flow from. All right, guys. This is our bus, the Bara bus. And this is our beautiful group that we're going to be spending all day with. Around the square, there are shops, cafes, and modern architecture. But what's interesting is how seamlessly it connects to the older, more historic parts of the city. All right, guys, that's great that in summer in Barcelona, most people that are tourists here are Americans. We're not supposed to use our phone or camera, but we don't like to follow rules. So now we're headed to the old town. The guide said, this is yeah. going to be one of the most popular items in this entire tour of Barcelona. Now the old town is like stepping into another world. The streets narrow down, the buildings tower a little higher, and suddenly it feels like you've entered the past. Can you believe some of these buildings have been standing for centuries? We learned something really amazing here. This is one of the really awesome things that I've heard. So look at all of these pictures, like if you look this kid who is lighting these firecrackers, if you look at these people who are sitting, it all signifies freedom. Look at this uh, person who's lifting his son. So this person on the lighthouse. So you would see all these pictures represent some sort of freedom, but when you go back and look at the overall picture, you're gonna see something really amazing. Two people kissing, just the lips. So cool, such a beautiful piece of art, lovely. This part of the city was shaped by the Romans. Not many people know this, but it was called Barcino. It was basically a place for retired Roman soldiers to come and settle down after all the fighting in the wars around the empire. So guys, this is the gate that existed 2,000 years ago and there were multiple arches in the ancient history 2,000 years ago. So that kissing painting that you saw was from 2014 and this is 2,000 years old. From all of those arches that existed entering into Barcelona, this is the only one remaining. And Another significance is when initially the people came, it was Barcino and that became Barcelona. It's kind of surreal to think you're walking the same path as people did a thousand years ago. Next stop, Cathedral of Barcelona. Very, very important spot. You can't miss it. It rises up, dominating the skyline and is a stunning example of Gothic architecture. It took 600 years and is dedicated to Saint Eulalia, whose remains lie beneath the altar. It features a Gothic spire soaring 70 meters, a rooftop with panoramic city views, a facade only completed in 1913, and even a Romanesque chapel dating back to 1257, all making it one of the most historically and architecturally fascinating landmarks in the city. Still walking around the old town and here we're gonna see these marks 
These are from the soldiers' wars, like the swords. So these are like the actual ones in this old town of Barcelona. Then we came across Pont del Bisbe. At first glance, you'd think this bridge has been here since medieval times, right? But guess what? It was actually built in 1928 by one of Gaudi's prodigies, Juan Rubio, who got very angry after the city rejected many of Rubio's more ambitious redesign proposals. And you know what he did? Okay. Let's find out. What he did after rejecting all of his proposals, he cares Barcelona. How he cares Barcelona. Can you find a dagger into the skull at the center of the bridge? The top. Yes. There is a dagger into the skull, yeah? That skull with the dagger pierced right through it is not just a decorative detail. Legend says the skull holds a dark curse over Barcelona. And if anyone dares to remove the dagger from it, the entire city will fall into ruin. If you walk under this bridge and by accident, I repeat that, by accident, by accident, if you look at the dagger and skeleton, you will have bad luck in your life as soon as possible. If you pass under this bridge, it's gonna be bad luck. That's gonna happen very soon. Hopefully, nothing bad's gonna happen. You know, I don't believe in all this bullshit, but these are beautiful stories, mythology. <laughs> From there, it's a short walk to something even older, the Temple of Augustus. This spot isn't as grand as the cathedral, but it's impressive in a different way. Four Roman columns just standing there in the middle of a quiet courtyard and all that remain of temple built in honor of Emperor Augustus. These columns have been standing there for nearly 2,000 years, silently witnessing the city's transformation. Okay, that was a fun fact and a very good part of the history. Enjoyed it. After wandering through the old town, it's time we head up to the Mount Druid mountain. All right, people, we have our next stop. This is on top of the mountain, right in the middle of the city of Barcelona. From here, you get a sweeping view of the entire city and beyond. What a beautiful view of Barcelona. Barcelona is laid out beneath you like a giant map. Mount Druid itself has an interesting past. It became the center of attention during the 1992 Summer Olympics. The Olympics were huge for Barcelona. They put the city on a global stage. The Olympic Stadium is still there. But beyond its history, Montjuic is a nice break from the city's pace. Green gardens, open spaces, and a much quieter vibe. Next, we visited Gaudi's magnum opus. Look at that. The Sagrada Familia. If you think you've seen everything, nothing quite prepares you for this. So this monument started in 1882 and it's still not complete. This is one of the most popular tourist attractions in the entire world. Even more than Eiffel Tower, even more than many of the other places that are existing in Europe. There's a symbolism everywhere you look, so much that even after spending hours here, you still feel like there's more to discover. And there's a reason for everything in this basilica. Gaudi wanted it to be the tallest temple, slightly less than the nearby mountain. He believed that the work of the man should never surpass the work of the God. What you see is not just a building, it's a story, a story 144 years in the making and still unfolding. Alright guys, so that was Sagrada Familia. Lots of fun, amazing, especially if you're into churches, basilica, and if you're into understanding history. To end the day, we made our way to Park Guell. Welcome to Park Guell. This is an important place here in Barcelona. 
This is important because of the architecture. It's a park, but it's got a house, like a white color house. It's got a few other places, very important architecture. And this architecture is inspired by nature because that's what Gaudi wanted to do. In fact, when he was graduating, his professor said, Gaudi, either you're going to be a genius or you're going to be terrible. Only time will tell. So this is the architecture that he made. The park sits on a hill and like everything Gaudi touched, it feels more like an artwork than a typical park. Curving benches covered in colorful mosaics, quirky buildings that look like they belong in a fairy tale, and the paths that wind up the hill. The structures almost seem to grow out of the ground as if they were always meant to be a part of the landscape. From the top, you get one last breathtaking view of the city, which feels like the perfect place to reflect on everything we'd seen and done. Barcelona isn't just a place to visit, it leaves a mark on you. Whether it's the layers of history or the creative spirit of Gaudi, the city stays with you. By the time you leave, you realize it's not just about the memories you've made, but about how the city has quietly woven itself into your experience. Thank you for being a part of this walk through the incredible city. Barcelona was just the starting point of my journey through Europe. There are many places with stories to tell and questions to be answered. So stick around for them and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.